dear students long time see you how are you all i hope you all are fine how is your holidays going on yeah playing enjoying okay but dear students while enjoying and playing you should take out some time to study so let's start here computer class 6 chapter number 1 categories of computer and computer languages okay let's start with introduction what is computer computer is electronic machine which performs any kind of work involving arithmetic and logical operations on data processes it as per the instruction or input given and gives the information as output this is called a computer okay now i tell you about the different categories of computers cat now there are different types of categories according to the speed size and memory computer are categorized into following types these are number 1 micro computers next mini computer then mainframe computer then super computers then mobile computers game console and embedded computers so i'll tell you about these categories one by one so first i'll take micro computers so what is micro computer what are the features of this micro computer micro computer are also known as personal computers or pcs which we are using in our house nowadays so they are they are small in size and are made up of single chip processors making them cost effective these are very cost effective so we are widely used in our home they are one of the greatest human inventions because because of this every human being can easily use this at their home they are powerful machines they are widely used in schools homes offices banks shops and hotels for example c64 ibm pc etc these are the examples of microcomputer so i think you can understood what's the what are the microcomputers so come to next mini computer they are bigger in size than micro computer if we are comparing then the my, mini computers are bigger than the size next the, they are uh, several hundred users can use it at the same time for example wax computers and pdp8 etc these are mini computers so nowadays mini computers are not much used next mainframe computers they are big computers with a large memory and a high speed and they have multiple cpus they are mainly used by big organizations like bank government offices and they are very powerful computers that's why they are using in the banks in the government offices for example pdp10 ibm390 and system z10 these are the examples of mainframe computers mainframe con- computers are first developed by company named ibm okay now i come to the next super computer super computers they are they are the world's largest and the fastest computers they can processes huge amount of data within a seconds they have multiple cpus and gpus therefore they are used in very often weather forecasting defense space research and etc so for example scray titan pratyush and mihi these are the commonly developed supercomputers in india now come to next mobile computers they are the smallest computers carried by the user very easily tablets smartphones are the most commonly used 
mobile computers. Tablets, tablets are the quite thin devices having a flat surface. The device can be easily held in your hand. It can it contains a touch screen which is operated using fingers in various ways such as tapping, double tapping, sweeping and pinching. Now come to next game console. Gaming is so popular that machines have been developed that are dedicated to playing computer games. They are called consoles. A gaming console is a different from standard computer as it does not include a keyboard, mouse or monitors. Instead, they come with their own dedicated input devices. For example, Sony Playstations, Microsoft Xbox, etc. These are the game consoles. And nowadays, you students are using this so much. Okay, now come to next. Embedded computers. Embedded computers is a small computer fixed inside a machine to perform a particular task. It means this is also a computer, but it's not look like as a usual computer that it can cannot consist these type of a separate CPUs Zid and outputs which were shown outside, but it can exist inside the machine which can perform particular task. It is designed to do some specific task rather than be general purpose computer for multiple tasks. The main purpose of an embedded computer is to control the machine. It does not look like a desktop computer but contains all the elements which I tell you that are essential for any computer. That is input, output, CPU, RAM, ROM, etc. These are the essential part of computers which we are known. Okay, but these are not shown outside the embedded computer. Instead of this, it was inbuilt in the embedded computers. Okay, for example, we can take glucometer, candle, and GPS receiver. These are the these are the machines which were using as a embedded computers but what is this what is the use of this glucometer glucometer helps in recording the blood glucose level at home for this who are for those who are diabetic patient it is very useful machine okay now come to next what is kindle do you know about it yes Kindle is used to read books, magazines, and newspapers. You can buy and download electronic books on the device and read it by using this machine, Kindle. This is an embedded computer. Now come to next. What is this? GPS receiver. GPS receiver is a pocket uh, device that helps in the getting details of location which were inbuilt also nowadays in Android ma Android mobile where you are also provides the direction to other locations okay so I think you can uh, understood easily this categories of different mobiles different computers okay now come to next I'll tell you about the types of computer languages okay this is see here computer languages computer languages are mainly classified into two languages low level languages and high level languages it is for our understanding okay and high level languages are considered ca categorized into two types machine languages assembly languages okay so first we take what is this uh, uh, computer language the computer needs to get instruction in a proper sequence in order to carry out any task properly. Okay? Because computer doesn't understand our language. We should try to understand his language. These instructions have to be given in some type of computer language. A set of instruction in a computer language is called a program. By now, 
you are also aware that the digital computer understands only the languages of zeros and ones due to the difficulty in writing instructions as per series of zeros and one many languages were developed because it is very um, difficult now so to write uh, every sentences everything uh, in zeros and one so these because of this problem languages are created and languages is are basically classified into this low level and high level languages so first i will tell you about the machine language what is this machine language machine language is a set of instructions written as a pattern of bits this means that that each instructions will be a series of zeros and ones which is extremely difficult to write this is considered to as a most primitive primitive computer language it is executed directly by the cpu of your computer as the cpu can understand the instructions without any kind of translation or the conversion okay the use of machine code is very cumbersome since the internal architecture of computers will differ from each other the machine language for each type will also be different this is the reason why the program was limited to only engineers mathematician and scientists during the earlier time now i tell you about the features of machine language it is a set of instruction written as a pattern of bits 0 and 1 it is a most primitive computer language and it is machine dependent language okay what is machine dependent it means only specific languages written in a specific machine okay now come to next i'll tell you about the assembly language assembly language enables a program to use symbolic representations or names of the numbers okay this representation is usually defined by the hardware manufacturers and assembly language is written in the form of abbreviations these are called mnemonics okay assembly languages were first developed in 1950s and were called as the second generation programming languages they greatly reduced much of the error prone time consuming process of writing in the machine language this is the assembly language i tell you about the features of assembly language it is written in the form of abbreviations which i told you this is called demonics it is also machine dependent language it requires a translation program for converting assembly language into machine language <coughs> okay now come to next i'll tell you about high level languages i hope you understood the low level languages now i tell you about the high level language what is this high level language high level languages are the instructions written in english like language these languages brought computers to door to door steps by for the use of common man as compared to the low level languages because these are relatively easier to use these languages are not machine dependent so they are more portable across different platforms and machines this means that a program written in a high level language can be executed on other computers without making any change to code basic cobol and fortans are examples of earlier high level languages for example c c++ java are the examples of hll in use today this developer language is developed in 1956 one of the first hll that was a great success was fortran because it was used mainly for mathematical and scientific application what is the fortran this is formula translator it is a very mainly used mathematical and scientific application so it it got a great success now i tell you about the features of this high level languages here instructions are written using english words and mathematical operators 
these languages are not machine dependent it requires a translation program for converting high level language into machine language okay so, so i hope you understood all the different categories of computer their languages its uses and features okay so dear students i know this pandemic period this lockdown is very difficult to pass but don't worry we are here to help you and to guide you okay and as soon as possible i'll come with my next continuation video of this chapter in which i'll tell you fourth generation language processing of computer uh, working of translator exercises and many more things okay so up to that stay home stay safe bye bye